Hello basketball fans, I'm Robert Schreier and welcome to Hardwood Heroes, your source for Tri-Valley Conference basketball. The journey to the top of the TVC is a long and winding journey, but don't worry, Hardwood will be here to break down all the action. Highlights, in-depth analysis, and exclusive feature content, we've got you covered. But without further ado, let's get right to it. The TVC hockey has proved to be a league deep with talent, and the conclusion of the season should be interesting to say the least. Both Southern and Eastern have gravitated to the top of the league with undefeated 3-0 conference marks, but not far behind them are Federal Hockey and Tribbles sitting at third and fourth in the hockey respectively. Both teams have rebounded from last season and look to continue their positive momentum into the second half of the season. We're going to get right to it here with our questions. We're going to welcome Adam Flango and Matty Kuhn to the set. We're going to start with you, Adam. Uh, what does Trimble need to do to join the elites of the hockey? Well, you know, Rob, Trimble came into this year very inexperienced on both sides. Both their uh, team had zero returning starters from last year's squad. And first year coach Kurt Moore, he really had a tough time feeling out the team at first. Didn't know what exactly to expect from his guys. But he knew, he realized early on in the year that they would have a tough time uh, scoring offensively. So he preached hustle and defense all year long. And this, they struggled off early in the year with four losses in a row. But they came off strong winning four of their next games and uh, be, uh, including a win over uh, previously unbeaten Nelsonville York. A huge win for this team and hopefully they can continue their momentum into the rest of the season. Well definitely I mean, they're a team to watch in the Hawking but for another for another uh, team on the Hawking we're going to send it now over to our side desk with uh, with Matt Archibald talking Federal Hawking hoops and Matt first year head coach Chris Murray has brought a whole new philosophy kind of what's he been preaching to his players? The biggest change coach Murray has brought to this team is a new up-tempo transition offense. They look to get out and run the ball, which is a big change for a team that didn't do much of either last year. They did not run the ball or do it very well. But this new offense has brought success to the Lancers. When they get out and run, they score a lot of points, and they have gotten most of their wins out of it. But their opponents, when they slow down the tempo and make the teams uh, run out of the half-court set, they do not win very often. Most of the losses have come when the opponent has slowed down the tempo and made them run out of the half-court offense. Now the Lancers are 4-4 four four in the season and 2-1 where it really matters in Hawking Division play. Their only loss to Southern, who is undefeated and has won the division two years in a row and is still on top of the division now. So Rob, the biggest thing, the jury's still out on the Lancers and we don't really know how good they are, but we will know in the next few weeks with more games to be played. Absolutely, Matt. We'll look for more action from Federal Hawking and Trimble here. But now that everyone's on the same page, it's time for something like for a little more on each team that we like to call mid-range jumper. The 15-foot jump shot is a lost art in basketball, but don't worry, not inside Hardwood Heroes. Our reporters have 15 seconds to sink a question I throw their way. We're going to start again here with Adam Flango. And Adam, Noah Guthrie seems to be the, pro the propulsion of that offense. What does he do to the, for the Tomcats? Well, you know, Rob, Noah Guthrie is a big guy, six foot seven, and very, he has a size advantage on almost everyone that he plays against. Early on in the year, he had trouble with fouls. He would get into foul trouble, and that would cause losses for Trimble. But he has uh, matured over the year, and now since he has been staying out of foul trouble, excellent uh, production from Noah Guthrie and really helped the Trimble Tomcats out. Absolutely. That was up and good. And we're going to go to Matt Archibald here is joining us on the side set. And should, Lancers, should the Lancer fans be concerned? They just went in a three-game losing streak. But, uh, should, I mean, should the Lancer fans be concerned at all about their team? No, I don't think so, Rob. The three-game losing streak is more of a mirage. One loss is to Southern, as I mentioned, has won the division last two years. They're still undefeated. Another loss to River Valley on a buzzer beater. So, I mean, that game's kind of a coin flip there. You can't really fault Federal Hawking there. And their final loss, maybe the only worrisome, was to Alexander. But Alexander made every shot they took, and the Lancers couldn't buy a basket. So if I'm a Lancer fan right now, do not panic. Breathe easy. The Lancers will be back to play. All right, well, you've got me breathing easy, so everything is all good in Lancer land. But each and every week, there are plenty of pressure pack games throughout the area, but sometimes the magic of basketball just happens. And the Athens Bulldogs have a shot at, have shot out of the cannon this season behind the play of point guard Colin Foff and forward Frank DeValentor. And first-year head coach Jeff Skinner, had a tough task as his team welcomed SEOAL power Logan to McAfee Gymnasium Tuesday night. The Bulldogs prevailed in double overtime behind the strong support of Corey Butcher, who finished with 25 points on 10 of 14 shooting. And for more at that game, Aaron Laviola was with me out at that game. And Aaron, uh, Athens won the game essentially in three end of the game situations as the game was uh, finished in double overtime. How were they able to win such a close game? Honestly, Will, Desire, 
and confidence. I mean, Rob, I bet your heart was pounding just as hard as I was in that gym. You know, it was a, it was a pressure situation as it was because the Logan assistant coach, Paul McNeil, was actually the head coach of Athens last year. So he knew exactly what to expect out of Athens. He knew their plays, he knew their styles, he knew how to get into their heads as well. And at one point, Coach Skinner actually yelled out, how did they know that? I just put it in yesterday. And, you know, the first, the first half, Athens played their game. They worked the ball around, they took, easy, they took wide open shots, they controlled it. Now, I don't know, I would love to know what was said in the locker room of, of Logan, because in the third quarter, they came out. <laughs> they were shooting easy layups. Patrick Engel had this little hook, little hook shot at the elbow that he shot probably four or five times. They scored 21 points that quarter and just they they took the lead with just one point. Now, Athens ended up coming back because in the fourth quarter, they got their composure back. I had never seen them lose their composure at all before. And they got it back. They um, they they took control of it. They dug deep and it was a mixture, it was a mixture between their slow their slower style of play and some transition offense. They they managed to keep up with it and play a little bit of tighter defense. You know, and then you and then you know, at the end of the game, Colin Foff got sent to the charity line over and over again, which was silly of Logan because I think the kid missed one, sh one shot, one free throw all night long. And they have the desire to win, and they know how to win. They know they can win. So, Rob, that, that's, it. like I said at the very beginning of this, confidence, will, desire. Absolutely, and that you're telling me, mean, you're talking about a hard pounded game. I was in there just sweating in the stands. I can't even imagine what the players were doing. But if you'd like to have a recap of this game and many more from around the TVC, be sure and visit our website. That's www.woub.org/slash heroes. Scores, schedules, features, and much more will be available to you there. Content is up to daily, so be sure to check back with us after each, after each night after the games. And one of the big games in the TVC went down in MacArthur where Nelsville York tried to rebound from their three-game losing streak. Pat Chiesa and Mark Pierce were out at the game to, to witness the excitement. And guys, how did it all shake out tonight? Well, Rob, it was a bad night to be in Studio A because all the action was here in Nelsonville, York. But the Vinton County Vikings pulled out a nail-biter 54-49 to over the Nelsonville, York Buckeyes. And, but Pat, it was right from the start, it was a heck of a game. Mark, the last the Nelson York Buckeyes have lost four games in a row, but all four of those games have been decided by single digits. They've been really close games. It just seems like every time they take the four, it's just going to come down to the last second. But unfortunately, they've just been showing up on the wrong side of the scoreboard. Yeah, and that, and that is unfortunate. But who, who, someone had to step up for the Buckeyes to make it such a good game. Uh, most definitely, Mark, and his name was Michael Mitchell. Michael was just phenomenal all night long. He's, as Coach Jay Klein likes to call, a quintessential slasher which means he can cut to the basket and make things happen from there. He can shoot, he can dribble, he can pass, and he did all of those things tonight. Right, but it wasn't quite enough to get the victory. Who put that dagger in the Buckeyes tonight? Well, well Mark, that'd be number 22, Adam Ward from Vinton County. He hit a trio of three-pointers in the fourth quarter, and after each one he was fist-pumping like he was a cast member of the <laughs> Jersey Shore. I mean, this kid was just cold-blooded for behind the arc, and he really just proved to be the dagger in the Buckeyes. So what does this loss mean for not only the Buckeyes individually, but also for the TVC Conference? Well, coming into tonight, there was a three-way tie for second place behind the Athens Bulldogs in the TVC. That was between Vinn County, the Belpre Eagles, and Nelsonville York. And obviously, since Vinn County defeated Nelsonville, Nelsonville dropped to third place. And the Belpre Eagles defeated the Alexander Spartans, which means that Nelsonville is definitely going to have some they're going to have to climb back into the, into, the, into the thick of things in the TBC. And it's going to be tough, to, harder for them to catch the number one team in the conference, the Athens Bulldogs, because they are still undefeated at 3-0. Well, Rob from Nelsonville, back to you.